everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're looking at yet another low-cost Windows PC. Today, it is the next book that I found at Walmart. You can find it, too, hanging from a store shelf like any other piece of retail merchandise. Uh, it's only $179, and I am, again, impressed with what we're seeing with these Intel Atom Bay Trail processors. So under the hood, uh, this is very similar to the HP Stream 7, to the uh, Asus X205. I've looked at all of those before, so you can check out those videos. Uh, very similar also to the Insignia 8-inch tablet that we looked at, uh, which is, again, the Intel Atom Bay Trail processor. It's a system on a chip, uh, so it performs very similar to all of those. Uh, what's cool about this one, though, is that it's got a 10-inch screen, so it's a pretty large tablet. And I'm saying tablet because it'll detach from its keyboard, and you can use it uh, like you would any other Windows tablet. And then when you want, you can just pop it uh, back on the keyboard here. It holds together with magnets. Uh, it latches in uh, really easily because it's got some guides here. So you just kind of line it up, and then it'll uh, stick on there. And the keyboard doesn't pop off that easily, so it does have a nice, secure fit. Uh, when you are ready to uh, put it to sleep, you can just fold it up like any other laptop computer and walk around with it. So it's a pretty nice design, uh, very similar to uh, the Asus uh, T100 that we looked at a few months ago, similar kind of uh, style to it. Now, what's neat about this versus some of the other tablets we've looked at is that you have uh, the ability to plug it into power uh, with a regular power adapter. It's kind of a small plug right here. And that's unique because uh, the tablets that we've looked at, specifically uh, the HP Stream 7, charge through their USB port, and you couldn't run USB devices and charge the device at the same time. Uh, this one will let you do that. So you can plug it in here. Uh, you've got the OTG USB connector. So you have to get a special cable called an OTG cable to plug in USB devices. It's about I got two or three dollar cable uh, on Amazon, so not hard to find. Uh, you can even plug it into a USB hub, so you can plug in a whole bunch of USB devices like you could into any other computer. So that's pretty handy there. Uh, you also have an HDMI output too, so you can plug it in uh, to an external display too. So it's got a few more ports on here, and I think the fact that you can charge it uh, and you use the USB simultaneously is a big plus in my book on this one because that's not something I've seen on some of these uh, other low-cost tablets out there. Uh, you also have a little SD card slot here, a micro SD card slot uh, to offset its internal storage. Now, internally, it has a 32 gigabyte uh, solid state disk, one of those eMMC drives, and it has only, though, one gigabyte of RAM. So that will limit your uh, multitasking and some of the other things you can do on it. So let's boot it up here. We'll see how long it takes to uh, come up and uh, get running. So we'll just hit the power button here. Uh, boot up time is very similar to what I've seen on the other Atom processor uh, devices we've looked at, probably about 10 seconds or so, give or take. Uh, and again, these really all perform identically because they are all running the same system on a chip. And before we look at some of the applications that we usually look at with these devices, I do want to talk about the display. So uh, the color temperature on the display is a little bit cold. And by that, I mean it runs kind of in the blue uh, hue. So you're going to notice it, especially if you put it up against an iPhone or another like a high-end uh, device, you're going to notice that uh, it does, doesn't look all that great from its color accuracy perspective. So definitely not something for uh, graphic artists, just given the fact that the color is made, maybe not the most perfectly accurate display. Uh, the other issue, which I'm having a hard time demonstrating on camera, but it is definitely uh, prevalent on this device, is that there is some bleed-through of the backlight along the bottom of the display. So if you're running like something in a dark scene, like a movie, like from Netflix or something, uh, you're going to notice some of the backlight like kind of leaking through at the bottom of the display. And that's a common issue with cheap computers like this one. So I'm not uh, going to really ding it too heavily for that. But I know a lot of people are sensitive to that. So you want to be careful about it. But uh, the display does look pretty nice, you know, giving those uh, issues some consideration because the viewing angles are nice. This is an IPS display. So uh, when you're using it as a tablet, uh, you're going to be able to see it uh, well and not have to squint at it or kind of get it adjusted in a perfect position when you're holding it. It looks pretty good uh, from just about every angle. Now, the number one question I always get on these devices is how well does Minecraft run. So here you go. This is our usual test. Uh, we're running Minecraft with probably about medium settings here. And I have the Optifine plugin installed, which gives you a little bit better graphic performance. Uh, really pretty good, actually. And again, this is a, identical to the performance I've seen on some of our other uh, reviews we've done of these Atom Bay Trail devices. I'm getting about 30 frames per second uh, as we're running through this scene here. You could get even more if you turn the settings down further, like the view distance and you know, I guess they call them chunks or whatever. Um, and you're able to uh, you know, pretty much tweak it as, as you like to try to get a little bit better frame rate out of here. But it is playable and usable. And I think if you're a Minecraft player and looking for something cheap to play it on, uh, this will certainly do it for you. 
And as a tablet, it does function pretty well with the Metro UI, so you can uh, do all of your modern tablet apps on uh, the device pretty nicely. It does have the same screen resolution as the HP Stream 7 and that Insignia 8-inch tablet, uh, 1280 by 800, 1200 by 800. Uh, but what's nice about the larger screen, of course, is that it makes it easier to see what you're looking at. So uh, everything is a lot larger. And if you've got eyesight issues and you don't think the 7-inch tablet's going to cut it, this 10-inch one uh, probably will. And, you know, it's pretty snappy in its performance. And it is a pretty pleasurable device to use in uh, the Metro UI. So we can also do that split screen thing here if we tweak it properly. And there you go. So you can see how uh, that works. And now we're going to pop back out. It doesn't have one of those uh, buttons in the middle. You've got to hit the Windows button up here to get your uh, start screen back again. All right, we're going to pop up Chrome now and see how it browses the web. So we'll just uh, go visit CNN here perhaps and take a look. Now, one of the things uh, on Chrome, of course, is that it is a memory hog. So when you're uh, dealing with only about a gigabyte of RAM, if you have other things loaded at the time, uh, you're going to see much slower web performance than you're seeing here. But it does load pages up pretty nicely. It does scroll through them pretty nicely. And uh, we can then uh, pop over to my YouTube channel here as well and see how that loads up. Uh, so I did find that when you just have the web browser loaded by itself, it will perform a lot better than it will if there's maybe one or two other applications loaded, again, because you've only got a gigabyte of RAM to play with. So we'll see how this YouTube video starts up here. And there you go. So it does get a little stuttery. And again, I think that's kind of uh, more of a RAM issue. But you know, I, I do think when you're running uh, Netflix or uh, you know, YouTube, once, if you've really got it just kind of isolated to that one activity, I think you'll uh, get decent playback performance. And because it's a Windows device, you can run Microsoft Office and Word on it and whatnot. And it does seem to work pretty well. You can see there's a little bit of a delay in rendering uh, this rather involved newsletter template. But again, that's due to the fact uh, that we've only got about a gig of RAM. But it's usable. And you can type on it. There's no real delay. So you can see I'm typing here. And it's coming out uh, pretty much as I'm typing it. So I think you can do uh, word processing. You can do all the basic work kind of tasks on here. Uh, without too many issues. Again, I think you just want to limit yourself to how many applications you have loaded at any given time. And one last test is the speed of its internal solid state drive. So we're getting about 55 megabytes per second, give or take, on the right side, and about 163 megabytes per second on the read side. Uh, that's pretty much in line with some of the other HP and Asus Atom devices that we looked at. It's a little bit slower uh, on its disk writes, but really not something you're going to notice uh, with something this low end. So, you know, it's another good Atom Bay Trail machine. There are some, you know, caveats with the screen, uh, specifically the color temperature and the bleed through at the bottom. But again, you're, you're really getting below $200 here for a fully functional Windows computer. So there, there's going to be some compromises made. I like the fact that this is an inexpensive 10 inch tablet. Uh, nice that you can pull this device off and uh, work on it as a tablet and then, of course, reattach to the keyboard. So I think a lot of people will like that. The keyboard is relatively comfortable to type on. The keys are small, but uh, they're spaced adequately apart that I'm able to type on it more comfortably than I can uh, on the Asus device here, which is a very similar design, of, uh, as we mentioned before. Um, so overall, I think it's, you know, it's another good value. And I think we're seeing now, uh, we're going to see a lot more of this uh, over the next couple of months. And I'm going to look at, in the future, finding more unique uh, you know, examples of uh, this Atom Bay Trail processor being used, because we're seeing a lot more of these devices. And I'm really going to try to pick out uh, the best of the breed as we're moving forward, because they all pretty much perform the same. It's a matter now of how people decide uh, to implement this very low-cost hardware. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching.